Hello friends, this video on coordination compounds part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So the objective of this lesson is to appreciate the Werner's theory on the coordination compounds. We'll know the meaning of various terms such as coordination entity, central atom, legends, coordination number, coordination sphere, coordination polyhedron, oxidation number, homoleptic and heteroleptic ligands. You will understand these terms. We will learn the use of, I mean learn the rules of nomenclature for this coordination compound. We will see how IUPAC has defined ways to uh, write names for this coordination compound. We will write the formulas and the names of some mononuclear com uh, coordination compounds. We will define some types of isomerism in the coordination compounds. We will understand various theories and in this chapter, we will understand only two theories, valence bond theories and crystal field theories on bonding in the coordination compound. We will also learn the stability in the coordination compound and also finally appreciate the importance of coordination compound in our daily -day life. So let's start the chapter with the definition. What is coordination compound? The whole chapter is all about coordination compound. See, coordination compound is a compound in which I have a central metal atom or ion that is bound to a number of ligands. For example, in this case, this is my cobalt. Cobalt is the central metal. Or you can say actually ion in this case, if you find the electronic, uh, this is plus three. Central metal or ion that is bounded to a number of anions or neutral molecules. So these will be neutral or anions. We will see examples of these. These will be either neutral molecules, for example, in this case, ammonia is neutral, but it can be an ions like Cl minus. Okay, and the whole thing is in a box, if you see. So, this is my coordination compound. In fact, Alfred Werner in 1893 was the first to formulate this idea of this coordination compound. He was the first to formulate the structure of the coordination compound, actually. Okay. So, a central mat, uh, metal atom or ion is called coordination center. We will discuss about these in detail now, where we will discuss the definition of this. And surrounding the array of molecules or ions, these are called ligands. We will talk about this. So, I have my ligands and my cobalt is a central atom or coordination center in this case. Okay. The best part about the coordination compound is, and that is the most uh, different part is, it does not lose its identity in the solution. So, for example, in this case, the whole thing you put in the solution, my chlorine will get removed, it will get ionized. But this whole thing in the box, it will not lose its identity, it will not break. Okay. For example, this guy, the, here what we see, this is a platinum here. I have two chlorine molecules in there, and this is my nitrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen, ammonia is also there. So if you see here, platinum is bonded to four ligands now. And this this chlorine is negative charge, this chlorine is also negative charge, and this ammonia is neutral, and this ammonia is neutral. And these four are called ligands, and this is called coordination center. Please note this is my coordination center. is called legends. We will discuss again about these in the next few slides. Okay, so this is all coordination compound. And what is special about the coordination compound? One thing special about the coordination compound is if you dissolve this in water in our in aqueous solution, it, it will not lose its identity. The whole thing will be intact. It will not break. For example, NaCl if we dissolve in water, it will break into Na plus Cl minus, right? Or for example, HCl will break into H plus Cl minus. But this guy, this whole coordination compound in this box will not lose its identity in the solution. And that was how it was found also. We will discuss about this. So before we proceed further, let's understand why should we study coordination compound? What is the importance of coordination compound in our day to day life? Where are the places where we actually use this coordination compound? So the first and the foremost use of coordination compound is, is in the qualitative and quantitative analysis of chemicals. For example, hardness of water. If you want to determine the hardness of water, we use EDTA 
and that is nothing but a coordination component. We'll study about these things in detail. Just understand that this is used for qualitative and quantitative analysis of chemical. In the chemicals, there are so many ions, and ions, and you want to uh, find out the presence of these ions and uh, ions. You can actually use coordination compounds to do that. It is also used in the extraction and also purification of gold and silver and nickel. Gold, silver, and nickel. Typically, in that extraction and purification, we typically form coordination complex that makes the whole process easier. The chlorophyll, which is used in all the plants, you must have heard, heard of this term chlorophyll that is used in photosynthesis. That's the most important uh, uh, thing in photosynthesis. It's a pigment actually, and, and that is nothing but a coordination compound of magnesium. This is a coordination compound of magnesium. We talk about the whole blood in the body. Blood in the body has hemoglobin. And hemoglobin is nothing but coordination compound of iron. Vitamins we take, vitamin B12 actually, it's a coordination compound of cobalt. Vitamin B12 is cobalt. Okay, a lot of enzymes, carboxypeptase, a lot of enzymes in the body are nothing but coordination compound. And you know the importance of uh, enzymes, they help in various metabolical processes in the body. Coordination compounds are used a lot in the industry. You can see the catalyst. There's so many catalysts which are used a lot in the industry for hydrogenation and a lot of other processes. They all coordination compound. The black and white film photography. In this case, the coordination compound is used. We'll discuss about these things in detail later. In medicines, a lot of chelating agent, we will not understand the term now, but okay. A lot of coordination compounds are used in the medicine industry also. In electroplating, textile, dyeing, to, to dye this uh, t-shirts red color, blue color, we use coordination compounds. So coordination compound also has a huge implementation in our day-to-day -day life, starting from blood to you know, the chlorophyll. So the most important part of human and the plants are coordination compounds. So that, that clearly tells about the importance of coordination compound in our day-to-day -day life. So let's start the chapter on the coordination compound. So there are various theories on the coordination compound. See, coordination compound exists. This is a fact. Now there are various theories to explain the behaviors of coordination compound, to explain the structure of coordination compound, to explain why uh, the coordination compound has certain magnetic moment or why it has uh, color. So those kind of behaviors that coordination compound depicts. So those behaviors are explained by various theories. And the first theory is the Werner theory, which will, it's a basic theory. That's the first theory that talks about the coordination compound. And then we have valence bond theory. And then came the crystal field theory. And then came molecular orbital theory, ligand field theory, and electronic theory. But we'll not discuss the last two theories. We'll be focusing on the first two theories in this chapter. So we'll be talking about the Werner theory, valence bond theory, and the crystal field. Uh, field theory. The valence bond theory and the crystal field theory typically talks about the structure of the coordination compound, which Werner theory could not explain. But these are all advancement of various theories. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attend free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.